Hey guys, hello Frederica, how are you? Hi Philip, I'm doing good. I, I'll just scooch in with a personal request. If you can send a little bit of warmer winds up from California to us here in Oregon, I would love that. We have been really stuck. Everything has been really stuck since Thursday with a big snow and ice storm. So oh, all yeah. hunkered down. I've been hearing that, especially back east to Midwest, but I didn't know Oregon got it too. But it would make sense. You're up there, yes. We have fairly uh, warm weather during the day. I think it's 65, 70. And the last two days, it was really beautiful. It wasn't as cold. At nighttime, it gets cold, but nothing compared to where you are, for sure. Well, I'm glad you rubbed it in. Okay, well, <laughs> it's definitely good to see you. I love it. Same here, same here. We always, this is our third live event. Oh, you know what? I forgot I have to click the live event on Instagram. I'm going to show you later how that works, if it works. Let's see right now. It doesn't seem to work. But anyway, anyway, let's just keep I going. I figure we're constantly evolving, too, because the questions that we've been getting, you know, between our podcasts and stuff, they get yep. a lot more defined and a lot more specific, either, you know, regarding the Oregon real estate market or the California real estate market. And I love really that people understand that this is not a an EXP promotional, it's the golden goose of right. the industry kind of podcast. It's just, right. it's a podcast for anybody, for yeah. clients, wanna, for, you know. I do want to point out that we both are big fans of EXP, of course, <laughs> because we like the benefits, right? We like the benefits of it. But um, but anyway, um, yeah, no, it's not. We're not trying to twist anybody's arm or trying to convince anybody to join EXP. We are simply asking, answering questions that anybody might have. I'm still really looking for people who were with EXP and left, you know, and I need to know, I really want to know what happened so that the company can have some feedback and grow from it because that's the kind of mindset our our uh, company leader has, really, you know, and this is, this is the amazing thing about it. But one of the things I think we wanted to talk about was stocks. Now, last time we touched that uh, on that a little bit on the EXP stock, and um, you made the promise to dive into a little more detail right, for exactly, people like yes. me. Exactly. And here I am keeping my promise. <laughs> so the actually, let's have a look real quick at the stock as they are today, because I just brought up a screen here. And let me see. Here it is. Uh, you should be able to see it. Can you see it? Yes, it's Perfect. coming up right now. Lots okay. of red. Yes, lots of red. Unfortunately, the market is down today. This is January 16th, so the market is down today. But as you can see right here, EX, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Can you see this better? Yep. Okay. So we're at 1310. Now, I want you to know that EXP, when I started with EXP, was at three or four dollars a share. Then it went to eight. I bought some. And remember, we get it at 10% discount, uh, EXP agents. And uh, it went all the way up to 160 $160. A lot of people sold at that time. And that's the reason why it came back down to this. But a lot of people would, would argue or state, make a statement saying that this is more the normal level, right? Because compared to, let's look at Compass down below, is 3.2. Redfin is 7.87. Anywhere House, uh, I think they have about 300 and... I want to say 300,000, 350,000 H, I'm not sure, somewhere around there, is 671. Remax is at 10, and Douglas Elm is at two, uh, $2. So this is really very telling, in my opinion, because when you have uh, somebody leading at EXPI, you start wondering, why are they the leader in the stock market? Why are they having more value in the stock than the other ones do? And the first thing that comes to mind, in my opinion, is uh, there is no offices to pay, right? We don't have office to pay, so we don't have the overhead. And with each office, you also have personnel. And this could be secretaries or salaries. And so it adds up very, very quickly. If you have, um, I forgot, I just had a, um, let me see. I had Warren Buffett here. I had something here where it says how many offices he has. But anyway, the point is, uh, let me see if I can find that really quick here. I don't see it here. Anyway, I don't even know that number. I would be totally in the dark by guessing that. But yeah, that, and that makes sense with the with the over overhead cost in general of the traditional brokerage. Yeah, I'm gonna show you real quick because I found it. Let me just see real quick here. Can, let me know if you can see the screen. 
Yep. So, so for example, Home Service America, which is a Berkshire Hathaway real estate brokerage firm, focuses primarily on residential home sales, and the brokerage has roughly 46,000 agents and 900 brokerage offices in 33 states. So think about it, 900 brokerage offices, right? That is a lot of, uh, that's a lot of rent to pay. And of course, I mean, if you make enough money, there's enough profit, it's not that big of a deal. But in our case with EXP, we don't have that. And those savings are passed on to the agents, which is pretty amazing in my eyes, you know. And another thing that we both know uh, really, really well, anybody in this business right now, the real estate business in America will know that this is pro the last year, 2023, has been the year where most, there was the biggest exodus of real estate agents from the business, from the industry, right? And this is partially because of the slowdown of the market. Um, also because of course it slows down and uh, realtors cannot pay their bills anymore right so they have to make a very harsh decision to go into a different arena different uh, uh, industry or have a side hustle now here is where i think the stock comes in very important and also agent revenue share because there is always a fact that remains right in an average year in an average healthy year we have 6.5 million transactions roughly in the United States. It went down by the end of, uh, I would say October last year, it went down to 3.7, right? So almost half, that's quite a big drop. That's so a lot, yeah. That's a lot. So now you have to uh, think about that half of the real estate agents or more are having a really tough time. However, even in the worst time, there is always transactions going on. This never has happened that there's no transaction, even in the worst time with economy, right? So that means, that's, That's why they call it the five D's, right? Yep. The what? The five C's? The five D's, like divorce, death. Oh, yes, exactly. Yep, yep. So here, if you were in at, at a position in the XP, for example, let's say where you had done some transactions, you had accumulated some stock, and you uh, do the stock, you have it set up that the dividends are being reinvested into stock, right? So it grows. And let's just say you're good at agent revenue share, you bring an agent on board. So even in those down times, you now have income, you know, so you don't have to worry about a side hustle. You don't have to worry about how I'm going to pay my bills. So that's one of the big benefits of the EXP stock. And again, agents at EXP can purchase stock at a 10% discount. So there's an additional savings there compared to the public You know, public pays a little bit more. Considering, yeah, considering that agents themselves can buy stock, my understanding is it basically makes them owners where it transforms them from the traditional brokerage where you're almost like a renter mm -hmm. and you pay your fees and you pay your fees and you pay your fees. But once you leave, you don't get anything. So now we're yeah. transitioning this to actually a portion of ownership in the company. So now you'd, it's funny to me because we always tell our clients mm -hmm. how much better it is to own a home than to rent. Yes. You know, over decades and decades, the numbers speak for themselves. Yet there's a lot of agents that have not explored the possibility of becoming an owner of a brokerage instead of just continuing to rent very expensive space. Is there a... You say they we can purchase the stock at a 10% discount. Is mm -hmm. there any maximum to it that an agent can buy? How does that work? Well, here's the thing. So from from as far as I know, we can take 5% of our commission for each transaction, right? And purchase the stock at 10% discount. Now, I'm not sure. It's a good question. It's actually something I need to explore. I'm not sure if you could go in additionally and privately purchase but I would assume not. I would assume this is through the transaction because the idea here is from, I would imagine from the uh, heads of the, the helm of uh, EXP, the idea is to uh, promote uh, agents to have more transactions because then they get more stock, right? So it's kind of like, I'll give you something, just buy more of it and I'll give you something in return, right? I'll give you a gift basically. So my understanding is that you can purchase at a 10% discount only through the transactions, but I will look into that and make a note of that actually, because that's a good question. However, you can go on a regular brokerage, of course, and buy EXP stock at any amount you want, but you won't get the 10% discount. 
with Up that being to. said, I think, yeah, I think you touched on another very interesting kind of rougher pain point sometimes when it comes to the agent brokerage relationship is that basically in terms of the stock, in terms of the stock options that at EXP that you have as an agent, you also, I feel like it also transforms you as an agent into working maybe a little harder because you went from working for somebody else, even though you're mm -hmm. kind of working for yourself, into really having a vested interest in the company's well being, in mm -hmm. the other agent's well being. And what I discovered, I don't know if you had the same, but what I discovered when I switched my brokerage to EXP, it is the first brokerage that I had ever been a part of that actually highly encourages and rewards and celebrates high producing agents or agents that increase their production, where I felt at a traditional brokerage from my personal experience, when I capped or when I paid all my fees that, you know, they could get from me over the course of the year, it kind of fell off a little bit. I almost felt that I wasn't interesting anymore because mm -hmm. there was basically nothing more for me to get. So I right. feel the overall feeling within the community of empowering each other, making each other better because the better we all get, the better the company is doing. It's almost like, almost like a circle of life that really, really comes together. Yeah, it's an interesting point. You know, this is the, I mean, this is general the culture at EXP anyway. And the beauty of it is the fact that agents are stock or company owners, right? And and this is, I, I don't know the percentage, I would imagine most agents are uh, stock owners or company owners compared to agent revenue share. There's only 12% of agents that actually activate and, pack, and actively do re agent revenue share, which some people call recruiting. But the to, to get back to your point, I think if you start purchasing company, and this is, by the way, how Warren Buffett picks his companies, right? When he invests in stocks. So he investigates how is the company managed? How is it run, right? How 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 is the, the person that runs the company, how are they conducting business? And based on that management style, he invests or chooses not to invest into the company. So we, inside the company, you and I, being inside EXP, we know very well how this company is run. We don't have to try to figure it out. We know it, right? So all agents have the same knowledge. They, they experience the, the, the benefit of being there. So, so now, if you decide to take 5% of your stock to purchase, 5% uh, of your commission to purchase stock, the next thing that automatically falls into place is, well, how... Can I make this, what I just purchased, grow more, grow faster? And that would be by participating in everybody's, helping everybody to succeed, right? This is the big thing about EXP that is different with other brokerages. Everybody is really out to help you succeed. There's not somebody there thinking, no, I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing because I want to keep it to myself. This is not the, the attitude here. This was the brokerage I was with before, was the, that kind of attitude. They would tell me, they would help me, but they never did. And I realized that I'm their competition. So so I think you hit it on the, 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 the nail on the head there because that company stock purchase at 5% discount, 10% discount, sorry, um, encourages a much stronger teamwork and envelopment of the whole concept, the whole culture. Well, not only that, but now that I've been at EXP for a while, I feel the whole, it's only a you know recruiting company and it's only agents being out for themselves because they, you know, they, all they focus on is, yeah, making money off of other agents or however you want to call it. For me, yeah. at this point in time, it almost goes into being an old wife's tale because it's incorrect. And again, we're not saying that exp is the golden goose and the solution to everything but right. we have seen that it has been a solution or a life change or a bettering circumstances with a lot of other agents and i think where the wife's tale comes from is first of all that for some reason people think that every agent mm -hmm. recruits and everybody thinks that that is one of the main actions agents take or maybe agents think, I've heard it before that agents think 
uh, or they have the knowledge that is incorrect that they say, well, how much do I have to recruit? So for some reason, we're still working on making sure that everybody understands that, first of all, it's a small percentage of really, really high producing brokers that have the energy, that have built the business for themselves, that have the capabilities to support others by bringing them over into their organization. Right. By the end of the day, I think it's really, really notable too that when somebody comes over, for example, into my organization at EXP, there's no additional cost than the regular $16,000 EXP fee at an 80-20 split, which going back to traditional brokerages that are more expensive and diving into the topic of teams or traditional real estate teams where a broker not only pays all their brokerage fees, but in most cases, as far as I've researched, pays the team lead 50% in addition of what is left after they pay all their fees. So now that's the question I think that needs to be answered by people that think that they know is, do you really understand that you're coming into somebody's organization that dedicates themselves to you and your success by help you grow, first of all. Second of all, do you understand that somebody that brings an agent into their organization doesn't get paid from what the agent makes. They are solely getting paid from the money that EXP makes doing the $16,000 at an 80-20 split. And third of all, now all you wipe out by, by being in an organization with a well-established, really high-producing agent is you don't have to go onto an traditional team and pay another 50% of everything you make. You can still be your own person, you can still do your own real estate business, but in combination with what EXP orders in terms of education and support, now you also get a whole organization with lots of other agents around you and everybody rallies together because again, the better we all are, the better the company does, which then is better for us. Yeah, I mean, there's a few points. So, I mean, first of all, I think you said the $16,000 fee, you're talking about the cap, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, I've been in forums too where agents have talked about different brokerages, like they said, or oh, which broker should I join? And for some reason, EXP has been known to be the one that's the most aggressive. I guess we have some agents that are really very aggressive in recruiting, right? So I remember in that forum, somebody says, oh, watch out, the XP agents are going to come on right away now because somebody said, "Where, what broker should I go? And somebody said, watch out, the XP agents are going to be on you like flies, right? And then one guy said, stay that, and this happens, unfortunately, in our industry. One guy said, well, that's the last company I would go to is EXP because I don't want to make somebody else rich of my commission, right? So I'm thinking, wait a minute, back up for a moment, you know, and this is probably what you uh, uh, mentioned just earlier. Some people may think this is totally wrong now. They may think that if they come on to EXP under somebody, let's say somebody comes on under me, right, that I get a commission from their check. This is not the case. It comes from the company, right? So their their income is not influenced at all. But what's more troubling in this particular statement to me is that this particular person is not happy for me or let's say anybody else to succeed, right? So he already says, well, I'm not going to join a brokerage where I'm going to make somebody else rich, right, to me coming on board. And I'm thinking that's completely the wrong. And I wouldn't even want a person like that. Because when, you know, when my um, upline guy, AJ, uh, and I came on board, you know, I was happy for him. I didn't think at all, hey, I don't want to make this guy rich. Hey, you know, everything, every transaction I do, he gets a cut of it from the company. I'm happy. I, I'm, I, hey, the more I make, the more he makes, basically, right? The more I produce. So there is this misconception. And again, I think once, you know, it's, it's funny, once you're at the company, because there's many instances that I've talked to agents who have resisted to come on EXP for two, three years, right? And then finally they did. And we talked about that briefly last time. And when people ask them, well, why did you all of a sudden change your mind? For three years, you said, no, 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 I'm not interested. I know it. And all of a sudden you did. And he said, he said, 
it was my ego. I actually, I was so busy with work and I thought I knew everything about it, but I just honestly didn't take the time to study the model. I didn't take the time to 20 minutes either to talk to an agent or watch a presentation to understand the business model. So, so this is the hurdle that we're trying, you and I are trying to dissolve in a sense where even here they could come on here or they can contact us if they have any question because they may have the completely wrong impression about what EXP is all about and therefore uh, might miss out on, on, a, on an opportunity in my opinion, you know? Not only that, but I think over the last three podcasts, um, now experiencing that people contact us way more and we get more, way more questions is I think we already have proven at least from our standpoint a lot of brokers wrong because even when people contact us or ask us questions, we're both not a hard sell. By the end of the day, I think when people come to me and ask me why I decided to go over to eXp, I'm happy to tell them. But like you, Philip, I'm the last person that sucks onto somebody, you know, like mm -hmm. a little insect or whatever. Because a lot of the times I have experienced that agents have asked me to come over by the end of the day, and it turned out just not to be a good personal fit. Mm -hmm. Because or not now, the right time. Right, not the right time, not the good personal fit, because I, as you are too, and anybody else that I know actually that has been building their organizations within EXP, we are actually really selective on yeah. the people that we even talk to or have conversations with or present the option and opportunity to look into exp at least from everybody i know which is you know a larger number of, of people um, right. to do the same as we do i have not heard of anybody that just literally goes through a list and randomly just calls anybody it is very strategic it is very planned yeah so to me, it's been nice that I've had conversations now numerous times with agents that they actually feel really good by the end of the day because I explained to them that there's a very particular reason why I would talk with them because right. they impressed me or because they have created a phenomenal business or because I liked them in a transaction or anything like that. So right. I yeah. I think that's I think that's important. And on top of that, you just mentioned AJ who basically sponsored you coming over. So now AJ gets paid by EXP from every transaction you make, but by the end of the day, AJ is extremely personally and professionally vested in you and helping you and supporting you and being there for you to make you better without you actually paying them or him in that case. So you getting AJ for free. Yes, oh, that's an interesting point. There's two points I want to point out. So one, I have to admit that in the very beginning, I EXP'd over everybody. Do you understand that term, right? I don't know if you heard it. That's what they called it when agents were super aggressive and tried to just don't EXP all over it. And I was in the beginning when I would meet agents, oh my gosh, you got to come to EXP. It's the best thing ever, right? And I, I, that didn't work. It was the worst approach ever. And then I started thinking, well, what would, how would I react if somebody would come up to me like that? Let's imagine you just jump out of the car and said, hey, are you an agent? Yes. Oh, you got to come to EXP. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, get away from me, right? So I changed my approach completely. And again, I'm not forcing anybody. I'm not even really acting aggressively going after it but if i have a transaction like i have a transaction now i sometimes talk to the other side you know to the agent hey how happy are you how are you doing there and if they express any kind of dissatisfaction then i will tell them hey let's let's have coffee and let's talk about it you know um so so that to me is 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 um is a more natural way to to bring it on to bring things on but another point you touched and, and again this show is about transparency and honesty right and while i love aj he's a great guy and i wish him all the success that he can have sponsors are not usually involved in helping the agent succeed they will sometimes you know they will encouraging words they send you text messages they send you to invitations of seminars and this has been an issue and they've been trying to solve that because when you're at EXP, let's say you have less, let's say you're a new agent. You have a mentor for the first three transactions, right? And so now when the mentor gets sick, right? Which happened to me, to my mentor in the middle of a transaction that was a few years ago, 
she got sick. It was a very um, uh, emergency, health healthcare emergency. And she said, why isn't your sponsor helping you? You know, he should jump in and help you. And and I did reach out to him, which was actually at the time Brian Casella, because Brian Casella and uh, AJ did it together. You know, Brian has since then disengaged from EXP for different reasons. But but it was interesting to me that the the, the and this is kind of what I'd like to do when agents come on board for me. This is the difference I would like to make. I really kind of want to hold their hand and make sure that the onboarding is the onboarding process is probably the most fickle time where people may jump and return back, right? Because they just, they're just they they're already afraid of making the change because it's, they have anxiety. And now one little thing spooks them. Like they may not get a call back from somebody. It's okay, this is not for me and, and, and it's out. So so there's those two things about it. But overall, I think it's still, it's still the best way to go, in my opinion. I, I do love that you mentioned that because I've heard it numerous times from agents that, you know, contacted me or got in touch with me because they have left exp and it was mm -hmm. almost a question of like hey what do you see that i didn't see so knock on wood i feel like i have to call my sponsor right now because i had the complete opposite experience and continue to have the complete opposite experience mm -hmm. where he coaches me he we we are on the phone at least three times a week he like there's so many things that I'm getting from my direct sponsor and the couple of people that you know are in in that upline, that my experience in that scenario has been incredible. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that. That's that's exactly the direction I would like to go in. And I'm hoping that the company goes that way too. You know, I mean, I can understand. Look, if you are a sponsor and let's say you have a lot of transactions, you're super busy, and let's say you have hundred people yeah. under you, it becomes challenging to touch base with all 100 people, right? I mean, you really would have to have a system where every every day you call somebody else for the next 100 days. So I, I understand it, but still there's some kind of support team other than the mentor, I think would be would be a good idea, you know? But still, you know, it's funny. The um, Have you heard of Rick Carruth? He's, uh, he's also in the XBH, he's a big um, um, coach. He's in, I think in Alabama, very nice guy, super successful, super cool guy. And so he had uh, something very interesting happened to him. And he he's a multi-million dollar you know guy. He does high high volume. And when you heard about this lawsuit that's going on with Spitzer and Burnett, you know about this 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 commissions that are supposedly people are coerced into it. Anyway, so he was going to have that particular attorney talk to him right on his show. And then he went to bed that night and said. What am I doing? I can't do this. This is not good because I might lose my position at EXP if I do that. You know, so he canceled it, right? He decided not to do it, which I think was a smart move on his part. And then he said uh, on the on the show, he said, "I wouldn't even know where to go if if EXP is not there. There's no company that offers the same thing, so I don't want to lose that position, right?" So I thought it was very smart and very interesting for him to make that statement. So. Well, That's and taking it back around, you yeah. know, to our initial to our initial conversation about stock, it's been a while now that you know I I've been at EXP, but I can tell you, even though my onboarding was great and um, the person helping me onboard was phenomenal and really helped mm -hmm. me with most of the stuff that she was able to help with, but again, transparency, transparency, I was extremely overwhelmed. It was so much and to this day it's been a while mm. at exp now yeah. i haven't really until we talked about it i haven't looked into the whole stock thing i right. know it's there if people ask me about it i usually connect them with somebody that is very knowledgeable in that right. particular part but i think there's good and bad where exp has a lot to offer but for me i think for at least three four five months Mm -hmm. I felt like I was running after the train, running after the train, yeah. not yeah. only learning all the different elements that this company has and all the different offerings, but also keeping up with the evolving, evolving and evolving company structure, yes. right? Coming out with new programs and, you know, helping other brokerages and all of this stuff that it's really great because they're agent centric and they're cloud based brokerage, meaning they can make decisions much faster especially because it's not a franchise system but right. yeah 
I'm not gonna lie, there's days where I still try to keep up. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I will agree with you at the beginning, and this is one of the points, actually, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, you know, I see a lot, I talk to a lot of agents, and I obviously check out their records, and sometimes I see they change brokerages within two years, five, six brokerages, right? And I'm frankly shocked when I see that. And to your point, you know, yes, the onboarding process at EXP is a little bit overwhelming, maybe more so than a regular office brokerage because everything's online. If you're not very computer literate, you may have a challenge, right? It's not impossible. But for that particular reason, I would say it is important to stick with a brokerage because when you invest all this time in the beginning, right, of learning and doing all this, why would you want to leave again? So that's why I tell people all the time, look into EXP learn everything there is and then make your decision whatever is best for you maybe exp is not for you but when you do go forward and and take on that mountain of work that's ahead of you from the onboarding then i would say make sure you stick with it you know and you can get through it you know basically you just have to take it day by day and again i do i do know for a fact that the onboarding process they're working at exp very hard to make that smoother because they've recognized that uh, some people just get overwhelmed and so i think there is a lot of emphasis behind it to make that more smooth and i think there is even an onboard uh there's like a global agent now or concierge service you know that you can my onboarding was like a concierge service i told it before right it's like checking the hotel it was amazing for me the onboarding was just amazing and luckily i'm pretty good with computers so it wasn't a big of an issue but there was definitely a curve you know in the beginning or kind of like a mountain you had to get over to to get through it but another point I want to point out really quickly, you know, the stock picture I showed earlier, one of those companies, I don't want to mention the name, they also tried two years ago to offer stocks to their agents. So they recruited agents under the um, a promise to, to, to be able to get stock, right? And then they discovered they're having losses. They cannot do that. So a year later, they took it away. And there were actual agents that sued that particular brokerage. And you can Google it online. You can find it. And like I said, I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to turn anybody down or talk badly about somebody. But the fact is still that that just shows you right there. That's evidence that it doesn't work when you have offices. It's just there's just limitations there because there's too much going out to the offices and the and the employees in those offices. <laughs> And if you have like, you know, not us as brokers necessarily look at the real estate brokerage stock market, but you have like really, really professional people that know, you know, probably a million ins and outs of the general stock market mm -hmm. for them, considering that we're still the highest, highest priced real estate brokerage stock at the moment, there must be a reason for that. And people see also not only the company leadership, but they also see the financial background of the company right the right. person there that's in charge of it our cfo who is a phenomenal person by the way and if i sometimes if i have like real numbers questions he would be he's like my numbers guy but right. they figured it out and that gives confidence to anybody else besides just the brokers buying stock because they want to own part of their company and they get the option to but for anybody else just buying exp stock in the regular marketplace mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, just really quickly, I want to show you, uh, we, we talked about Warren Buffett earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, just share the screen real quick. There's a three things that he really loves, right? That he, uh, the three real estate sectors. And one of them, look at this, is EXP World Holdings. Can you see the screen? Interesting. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So there is one that sets to outpace Berkshire Hathaway, which is EXP Holdings. So this is an interesting, very interesting thing to me. Also, the second thing he is really interested in, this is Warren Buffett, who is interested in title insurance. And another thing he's interested in is affordable housing, right? And this is very interesting because affordable housing, I've been dealing with this subject for a while now and researching it and came up with an idea because the I think we can safely say that the prices are not going to come down. If they do, it's going to be very little, but most likely prices are going to continue to rise, right? 
I mean, here in Los Angeles, I know there's a duplex in 1948 that cost fifty thousand dollars, and it sold uh, three years ago for ten million, for a million fifty thousand, right? Yeah, one million fifty thousand dollars. So it's always going up. And those people, I talked to the owner of that house, that duplex, when she bought it with her husband in 1948 or whatever, or fifty. She said, "Oh my gosh, fifty thousand was all the money in the world. We never thought it would go any higher, right? This will always be the case." But coming back to affordability. Um, I believe that companies like uh, Kudo or even Tesla Homes, for example, you could buy a piece of land somewhere for 50000 or 100000 and you buy a, a Tesla or a boxable home or a Kudo, Kudo home. I'm going to show you a video really quick afterwards. And those can go anywhere from twenty to 200000 So let's say you buy a property, a piece of land for 100000 You put the Kudo home on it for two hundred. Now you got something for 300000 There's obviously a foundation it has to be attached to, right? Now, don't quote me on this, but I know they had two challenges, these companies, with those uh, prefab homes. And they're fantastic, by the way. Um, one is they couldn't get a lender to uh, provide a loan because it's not really... A house right it's not a house in the traditional sense that it's mounted to the thing and it was built on that foundation however they're working on a way this is what i've been researching and it's not out yet but they're working on a way where you buy a situation like that and eventually over time if it's on a foundation it becomes like a real house so now you have purchased let's say a house for three four hundred thousand dollars and you can add on with these houses they're like building blocks so you can make a one bedroom later on we can make it a two bedroom and make it a three bedroom and you can put it pretty much anywhere you want and since we're already talking about it let me just show you real quick what i mean yeah uh, do they are they considered mobile homes they're not really mobile homes they're prefab right. homes yeah so they're prefab so have a look at this and see yeah you can see it. How in the world did I not know about this? <laughs> oh, That's why we're doing this a because I'm telling you, I basically just put that on my on my Christmas wish list. <laughs> Especially for me, this is amazing. I will I get a ton more information on that because I am up here in Oregon as an acreage specialist. There's yep. lots and lots of times where people need to find a temporary solution. Because yep. a lot of our acreage still has, you know, very old rundown farmhouses or anything like that on bigger pieces of land. Mm -hmm. And you know exactly, and a lot of other people know too, how long it takes to build a custom home compared to, you know, a quick right. kind of development cookie cutter. So I feel this is such a great solution or option for people to, you know, Absolutely. be able to sell their formal house take possession of the new land, use the Kudo home or any, any other of these, and mm -hmm. then remove the existing home in order to build a new one. That is incredible. Yes, and I and I talked to the company there based out of Hamburg, right? It's a German company. So I talked to the owner while yes, back. Yes, from Hamburg. Had, Hamburg, yes. <laughs> Your hometown right near you, right? And they um, they have some trouble here, obviously, with building codes, but they're working that out. And with affordability, you know, at that time, the uh, cheapest unit was 200000 They're trying to get the prices down. 
and I believe that was a one bedroom, but it's so well planned, you know, and so well laid out that even though it's small, it's very functional. But it could be a perfect ADU, for example, even in the back. <gasps> the idea, the idea I had was I had talked to some investors because the idea I had was to purchase five acres somewhere out in 29 Palms in the desert, right? And put three of those CUDA homes on there. One is a studio, one is a one bedroom, one is a two bedroom. And they're far enough apart to this privacy. And they would serve as um, they would serve as showrooms or Airbnb if they're not shown. So it could be it could be an interesting uh, you know um, experiment to see. And the company at that time said they might have a price reduction if we do that kind of project because obviously it would be a showroom for them as well. That was kind of my my mm -hmm. uh, my my incentive, you know, to have them dangle the carrot in front of them and said, hey. You could be here in California because the next CUDA home to visit in person is in Colorado. So there's, oh, wow. nothing, there's nothing elsewhere. And they're also coming out of Buffalo. So they're being shipped to Buffalo and then they're transported to the United States throughout. So anyway, we haven't really gotten any further with that because they're in Portugal and all over the place. They're busy. But I, I think that is a solution for families or for people who cannot afford a million dollar house. Yeah, But, you know, just like in Topanga now, I saw, you know, the Topanga area I used to live in Los Angeles, right? In Topanga, I saw a um, about 10,000 square foot lot for about $65,000, I think. And it has water and power hookup. And oh, you, wow. get a septic, you get a septic tank because you're out like in Malibu, you're out in the country, right? And you could put a house there for 300000 you know? So it's an idea. It's just an idea that, uh, that I am. Um, Maybe if I start making extra income through EXP stock now, um, you know, that that will go on my list. Would yes. you, before I forget to ask towards towards the end of, of our podcast, can mm -hmm. you just quickly run through the different stock options? Because you mentioned there are some you can buy from transactions. There's something where when you hit your cap and become a certain agent that they are something stock yes. related to, correct? Yep, yep, that's right. You're, I'm glad you brought it up. So not the first option is with each transaction, with each commission check you get, you can opt, you don't have to. You can opt into the program where they take 5% of that commission and purchase EXP company stock at a 10% discount. That's number one. Number Two is when you have capped, meaning you have made the company $16,000. Now, by the way, if you're in a team, that's only $8,000 for a team member, right? That's half. So uh, let's say you make the company, and this is, depends on where you're at. You know, Maybe in Los Angeles, it might be um, four or five transactions, where in the Midwest, it might be 10. It depends on the price structure of your market, right? But let's just say you cap, you get the $16,000 back in company stock. That's pretty amazing. So it's not that you're getting money back, but remember, you paid, you didn't pay, you made that money for the company, right? And when you, well, when and I you, didn't uh, know, I've never heard of any brokerage paying agents any money back. They usually me, just want more. Yeah, let me correct. Let me correct something here. So here's the thing: once you cap, you make a hundred thousand, right? That remaining mm -hmm. year. If you do 20 more transactions, you're an icon agent. This is when you get the $16,000 back in, in right. company stock. It is still, it is, it can ac accumulate to quite a bit, you know. And really quick, I have a 90 second video that talks about the company. Well, quick, if you want to watch that, because I know we're coming oh, awesome. to the end. And let me just share that real quick. Uh, here we go. And just this is really, really brief and has a better insight in what. Welcome to the world of EXP Realty, the future of real estate. At EXP Realty, we're revolutionizing the way agents connect, collaborate, and succeed. We've built a global community of agents who work together in a virtual, immersive workplace, uniquely headquartered in the metaverse, truly revolutionizing the real estate landscape. At EXP Realty, we believe that the future of real estate is digital. We're leading the charge in that direction on a global scale. But EXP Realty isn't just about the technology. We believe in fostering a strong sense of collaboration and community. And as an agent-owned company, 
we offer an unparalleled opportunity to grow, succeed, and build generational wealth like never before. Our revenue sharing program allows agents to earn additional income by attracting new and productive agents to the EXP Realty family. We also offer equity opportunities in the form of stock shares, purchased at a discounted rate, or earned through benchmark achievements. Whether you're an experienced agent looking for a dynamic and supportive community or someone considering a career in real estate, EXP Realty is the place where agents succeed together. Welcome to the future of real estate. Welcome to EXP Realty. It almost gives me goosebumps. I'm like, I'm part of the future of real estate. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I, know. I know it's this great to be great already on board, I, right? <laughs> right, right. Totally. I'm like, well, I'm already part of it. And I love this video because it literally sums up what we talked today about. Yep. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, right? And so I know we're coming close to an end. Uh, what I want to do is also, you know, um, towards our the ends of our podcast is to promote a local business, right? And there is a few people I, I would that. stand out. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, I like to help others. And I, I do believe that if you help others, that there is, um, I think, at EXP, this is like the mindset or there's also not just the EXP mindset, but there's somebody who said that once. I think it may have been Jim Ron, who's a very uh, promotional speaker. If you don't know him, you should look him up on YouTube. He does is not alive anymore, but he used to travel the world to do promotional speaking for large companies. And he basically says, if you want something, if you help somebody else getting what they want, you will get what you want. You see what I'm saying? So if you help others, it will come back to you in, in unexpected forms, you know, and this is kind of the the the, the uh, mindset and the culture at EXP. It's almost like the law of attraction or the rules of abundant or, you know, yep. that's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And really oh. quick, I just, uh, I had my headshots done with a photographer here in Los Angeles. And will you show us I, one? And when, I'm sorry. Will you show us one? Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> yes, I can. Hang on a second. Uh, first of all, I'll show you really quick uh, Joshua's uh, headshots uh, website. So this cool. is what he does, right? He has really um, figured out, he really is a master in photography, the lighting, you know, he really captures the moment. And um, then also he has, let me just show you the other one. He has, he has another website where he does some really cool stuff, which is uh the print work that he does look at this look at the amazing pictures you know the clarity and the colorfulness and just the creativity is just beyond what i think is just i think it's phenomenal i do photography myself i've done it for many years you know we had fashion shoots and stuff so i know when a photographer is great and he really does amazing work anyway i want to uh, shout out to him and his number is in the ticker down below if somebody wants to get a hold of him, Joshua Michael Shelton Photography, and uh, he's in Los Angeles, and the phone number is down here below. If you have does somebody, he service, does he service the greater Los Angeles area, or is there, yeah. you know? Yeah, he has a studio downtown. Actually, a really cool studio. It's very clean, very nice. He makes great coffee too, and um, has a really good setup, you know. So yeah, it's really good. And if you have somebody to promote, let me know. In the meantime, I'm looking for a headshot. <laughs> I can show you. <laughs> Let's see where I put those. Yeah, um, I always laugh because I don't know any other industry where people take as consistently changing headshots as we do. But yes, yeah, that's that's <laughs> is definitely this is very true. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, there we go, headshots. Uh, let's see here. So this is. Let me see. If we can open this. This is probably the one I get the most comments about. And let me just share this real quick here. And you can tell me what you think of it. Can you see it? It's loading. Oh, oh it's loading. wow. So yeah, that he did a good job. He, he captured the moment. He did a good job, I think, you know. He makes me look better than I am. <laughs> well, not only that, but like it is so clear on the hairs with a darker background. That yeah. looks incredible. Yeah, he did an amazing job. We shot a lot of pictures. You know, we have some other ones um, that, let me see if I have, because we did two different shots. Let me just see if I have the other ones. Would you categorize him as extremely expensive or fairly affordable? 
No, or I think I would say he's actually, a, I would actually say he's affordable because I believe uh, it was like 300 or something like that, 295, 300 for two, three hours. So I thought it was very oh, reasonable. Yeah. Actually. yeah. So I maybe it was 350. You, you know, I, I think the first time you get a, you get a discount sometimes if you have a coupon. Um, but I think around 350 and that's probably normal for, for good headshots. And he I really takes so. a lot of pictures. Does he do real estate photography too, or specializes on headshots nope, and prints? No, only headshots and nice. print work. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do you have somebody you in your neighborhood? Uh, anybody you do business with that you? Uh, photography are fond wise. Of? Yeah, or not just that you're fond of. So anybody, any business, local business in your area oh, that you're fond yeah. of? No, uh, absolutely. I mean. <laughs> That was the origin of the Portland metro area was the old saying of keeping Portland weird because we were kind of a a hub for small mm -hmm. businesses and creative people and stuff like that. So I will definitely make sure I'll let I'll I'll get somebody that I would like to point out for next time and, and send the information for sure. Yep. And another thing I want to share really quickly is our uh, let's see where it was. I have to find it now, of course. Our next event. If you can see it, let me know if you can see it. Yep. Uh, the Yay. next event is February 20th. Let me just see. There we go. It's a little bit smaller here. It's better. It's February 20th at 5 p.m. Same time. So every third Tuesday, we have these uh, sessions, which are great. I really enjoy these sessions with you, Frederica, because I think we have a good, we bounce off each other really, really well. And uh, we have good uh, good chemistry going. It's, it's really a lot of fun every time, you know? And people just love hearing our accents too, because yes, apparently, exactly. apparently it makes things more. Somebody told me that watched, I think our first podcast, um, and that like wrote me actually a really nice email and said like, I most enjoyed your guys's accent. It makes you so unique, and I like just love hearing it. I'm like, well, that comes naturally. You're welcome. This is so funny because I have a listing right now, and there's a. Uh, an agent by the name of Isabel, right? And she uh, submitting an offer tomorrow. And so she, we talked on the phone. And the second time we talked, she says, I have to ask you, where's your accent from? Is it from Austria? And I said, oh my gosh, you could read a phone book to me. <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest thing. So next time I'm going to call her, I'm going to say, hey, Isabel, I got the phone book open. Are you ready for two hours? <laughs> Just read her all the numbers and she loves it. Anyway, I love it. That's, that's funny. a funny thing. <laughs> I appreciate all your time. This was another great one for sure. One for the books. So yes, everybody can watch books. out for all the social media channels. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, Thank you, Philip. What, what's uh, what really quick? How's the market up in Oregon right here, right now? We have from this listing when I started in November, we had a DOM days on market of 58. Now it jumped to 50, 70, 74. So the market has slowed down. Prices haven't really come down, but the market has slowed down. What's your DOM in uh, Oregon right now in your area? It, it's it's a little shorter. I mean, the last four days. Uh, taking out of the equation, because when we have severe weather conditions or during the winter in Oregon, yeah. uh, a lot of it stops or it really stops people in their tracks. But by the end of the day, with the alignment of interest rates coming down, which we always see in an election year, right? It's a it's right. a favorite strategy for yeah. election years. Um, we We consistently had a very strong seller's market for almost a decade now, but we're seeing shorter days on market and we actually earlier than usual this year see inventory come back up and inventory numbers come back up so that's been very promising right right exactly yeah yeah that's no, why i good. tell people i tell you know conversations i have with buyers right now especially with buyers is you might want to think about accumulating information now because you might yeah. want to be not only ahead of the typical in oregon our typical spring curve yeah. where people are more motivated because the weather is better but you might also want to be ahead of the curve in terms of when interest rates keep going down a little bit as expected as of right now, yep. we will have a flood of the market. So we'll, we'll see how that's going to end up. Absolutely. Anyway, sounds good. Same here. Yeah, I tell people buyers get in now because rates are going to drop and you have less yeah. competition. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things. People usually flock with the masses, right? If everybody buys, then they go buy. But the yep. smart ones buy before everybody goes to buy. Anyway. I love that. That's so true.
All right. Well, I'll see you Thanks, next time. Ella. Thank you so much. And uh, until next time, I'm going to end the stream. And thank you, everybody watching. And if you can like and forward this uh, video to people that you know, Frederick and I would greatly appreciate it as we're starting out with this podcast and we're going to take it to the max. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Philip. Have a good night. Thank you.